Hello crafters, this is Gareth from G's Creation and welcome to today's video. I hope, hopefully many of you will recognise this. This was something I posted on Facebook at the end of last year and many, many, many of you wanted a tutorial. Um, I had it in the works and I ran out of gesso, then I didn't have a vase that I could use so I had to wait till I got, I got to Ikea. Um, so there's a few reasons why it's late coming to you. I've had, I get messages and emails asking when it's coming. So here is the video. Here is the, um, this is a glass cylinder, cylinder vase. And I did the faux birch painting technique on it. And then I just added the twine and the, the pine cone as a decorative touch. So all I use, I have the vase that I got from Ikea. I've got some new gesso. So this is just a square vase. I thought square would be better because it would be, it will sit flat while I'm painting it where a round one would roll around and you probably wouldn't get the best look. Now this is an Ikea vase. Um, it doesn't say the the name, but it's from Ikea as you can see by the label here. Um, I'm just gonna take off the, that cut bit of cardboard. Now all I use is white gesso, some black ready mixed paint and I use the uh, Distress Spray Stain and it's the Vintage Photo. Now my bottle um, wasn't working with properly so I've had to transfer it into one of my bottles that I have in my stash. So the first thing I am going to do is I, I um quite thick layers and it, it's thicker in some parts than in others if I can get this gesso open. Come on. Oh. Okay, that's not working. Let's go to scissors. Scissor mode. Come on. Why do they never make these things so they open properly? Gonna get gesso all over my fingers, which I don't particularly like. Ugh. Hey ho. I'm sure my fingers are gonna get more gesso on them as I do this, so I shouldn't really complain. How is everyone? Um, thank you uh, for all your well wishes, and uh, I'm feeling much, much better today. Um, I recorded this video on Saturday. Um, you won't see this until um, Tuesday or Thursday of next week. Well, this week because you're seeing it now, but it, it's next week for me as I record this. So I am literally going to paint over this vase. And I want the stroke marks because um, for many birch trees you have this kind of... And I'm going to go really thick in some places. This gesso is, is, is new to me and it's a lot th thinner than the gesso I was using. It's from the works, so I thought I'd give it a go. I'll see if it works. <laughs> How funny am I? Gareth the Comedian. <laughs> so I'm just going to go all the way around. I was actually thinking of um, kind of fast forwarding some aspects of this particular tutorial, but I think it's quite important for you to see as much as I can in real time. I'm going to leave the back um, until um, things are dry because I have I want this to to rest on the back while I'm showing you techniques. So as you can see, I'm doing large, um, long, and thick um, paintbrush marks, and I'm using a foam. Um, brush which is a, are available in my store and that's G's create uh, not G's creation and that's G's embellishment emporium.com there'll be a link down below in the description bar so I'm going to give it texture as well using my um, sponge brush foam brush right, I'm gonna lay that down the next I'm going to I'm going to heat set this with my um, heat tool so I won't let you listen to that. I'll cut off and come back. I'm trying to zoom you in a bit. A bit. Um, this gesso isn't as thick as the one that I used on the cylinder vase, which isn't a problem as such. I can just do multi layers. But I don't want the I don't want the glass to show through as such. As you can see, I'm giving it texture using the brush, and if you can see in these parts here, 
these pots here is thicker than others and it gives it texture now it's at this point where even though it's it's when these these thicker parts the the actual outside is um almost dry i'm now going to use some of the um black paint um and you can use acrylic it's um entirely up to you which you choose to use and i am going to use we could get one of my little paint trays Need to get one of the ones that I stock in my store because they're the ideal size for this. They're not too big, so I'm going to use little paint trays that are stocked at G's Embellishment Emporium. And I'm going to go across in a dabbing motion at intervals um, across the vase. And I'm doing this stippling because I want it to almost mingle in places with the the white gesso to give it that depth. So I'm going to heat this this again. I'm going now to using the to smallest of my um, sponge dabbers, which these are also stocked at uh, G's Embellishment Emporium. I'm just going to just give these lines texture by dabbing over them. And I'm fine with the uh, the whites coming over them. That's fine. This this particular project, it kind of it looks worse before it gets better. And it's one of those projects where you can just let your imagination go wild. You can you know you can use your finger and dab it to give it texture. It's entirely up to you how you go about kind of giving the texture that you want. You've got the wood texture. You've got the other elements coming through. And now you could also spray on some of the, um, I use the vintage gold, the vintage pa um, paper, not vintage gold, the vintage paper. And again, you can go back with a piece of tissue and you can dab. And these thicker parts will burst open because it's um, only dry on the top. That's absolutely fine as well. Again, it just gives it texture. And you can, you can um, I think I must have done about four or five layers on that, on the cylinder vase of this particular technique. It's, you know, you're going over, you're putting more color on different areas just to give it the look that you want. If you want it more uniformed, you can do it that way. If you want it less texture, with less texture, you can do it that way. It's entirely up to you. So I'm just going to do this side again I'm putting another layer of the uh, the gesso one because this gesso is a lot thinner than the one I used on the cylinder vase and putting gloops on in different areas and that gloops is a technical term as you can tell right I'm going to heat set this and then I'll be right back with you So I'm just going to play around with the layers now. Just get a bit more of the uh, just get more of the texture on it that I want. I guess the main thing about this is that there is no right or wrong. Just create, just play, just let your, you know what the birch looks like. So just try and achieve that look by um, using different textures. And you, you need to use predominantly the browns, the blacks, the whites and the greys. I'm just going to heat set this. I will do the, the back and the other side off camera. And then I will come back and show you the finished article. But as you can see with this one, I, um, there's lots of texture, lots of brush strokes. There's bits of tissue stuck into it because, um, you know, that's what I use to give it the texture. 
I thinned out the black. I used, I thinned out the spray. There's so many different, you know, so many different ways that you can, you know, create this effect. And once it's done, once it's finished, it really does. I think it really does have a birch look about it, especially with the texture. I mean, if you look at that, I think that looks like birch wood. This is obviously my opinion. Um, I mean, you may disagree with me. You may think this is complete and utter rubbish. <laughs> But um, I just wanted to bring you this, uh, you know, how I achieved the look on, the, on that cylinder vase. And, and that's this, the way I'm showing you now on video is exactly what I did. Just lots of texture, lots of layers. And it doesn't take a lot. You know, you can be as thick or as, uh, uh, or as patchy or as, or as uniformed as you want. There's no wrongs or rights. And that's exactly, in my opinion, that's what crafting should be about. Get holding a canvas having an idea if it works out it works out if it doesn't you may want to change your mind you know it's all about that creativity and letting that creativity flow and if you get a different um you know project at the end of it that's not a failure it's all about the fun the connection that you have with that particular piece so i'm just going to gesso over this again because this gesso is thinner than my last one and I will um, do the same as I've done on the other two sides on these two sides and then I will come back to you with the finished article see you soon okay crafters this is the finished vase hopefully you can see the um, the texture on there the only thing I did with both of these after once I done the technique is I painted them with gesso, which is why you've got that kind of sheen to it. You put a candle in there, so the candle will look really nice in there because the glow would come through. So there we are. That's how I achieved the look. So I hope you give it a try. If you do give it a try, share pictures on my group on Facebook, and that's G's creation is now my creation. There'll be a link for all my social media below in the description bar. Thank you very much for joining me, and I will see you again very soon. Take care now.